Hey everybody, okay, here we go. I'm gonna play my eight minute lightning talk song, which it won't quite be eight minutes, but it's the bulk of my talk for tomorrow night. My talk on data visualization without using any visuals um, for this group event, this uh, special library association event tomorrow night. So uh, this is called Data Viz, A Lesson in Verse by yours truly. Well, I was spending time looking at some data, figuring out the story it could tell. Taking time studying the data, lots of rows and columns in Excel. I needed to get a report to my boss. I needed to get it to her quick. And though I wasn't shooting for form or function, I still wanted to make it something slick. Took a moment, pulled some books from a shelf, seeking out some expert advice. Two books by Stephanie Evergreen, I think they're worth much more than their price. I flipped to the page that talks about the science, the work of Cleveland and McGill. Turns out that humans aren't innate at reading data, and choosing the right charts takes some skill. One of these books has a chart chooser cheat sheet that I find an awful handy too. Plus a deck of chart chooser cards, together they help me learn the rules. So when I was invited to give this talk without the use of any picture clues, I thought I'd try to turn the rules into a song to quickly teach a few to you. When you've got a single number that you're trying to convey, a single number of great importance, a simple, single thing the numbers say. The easiest means to get the thought across is forget about charts of any kind. Just write that number big and loud on a page. There's no need to clutter people's minds. And other times you need to describe how two numbers are alike or not. Bars side by side or back to back, try these or else to dot plot. If you've got one group in particular that changes while the other stay the same, consider how a slope graph can easily show the difference that you're trying to claim. Now many times you'll find you've got a benchmark and stories all about meeting goals. Often times we measure performance, it's important when we're talking bank rolls. Benchmark the line across a line of columns will easily get the point across. So will a bullet chart or indicator dots pick and choose with these for your boss. Now you know we love to get surveys, so what the survey says we'll need to show. For this task, there are lots of choices involving bars stacked up in a row. Stacked are divergent, aggregated to, or a bunch of small multiples at the top. And if you get tired of plain old bars, show the same thing with the lollipop. And what about when there are parts of a whole, like a bunch of demographics of a group? It's easy to default to the famous old pie chart, but listen up folks, here's a scoop. Pie charts are old, and pie charts are boring, but most often they're not difficult to read. Try a histogrammetry map, a stacked bar instead, or perhaps no visuals what you need. Sometimes you've got some data that shows how things have changed over time. It's really a pretty problem, we see it quite a lot. Do our numbers shrink or did they climb? Well, a few chart types have sung about already. In this case, we'll also do the trick. Think a line graph, a snow graph, a slope graph, a crack dot plot two, or a deviation bar is a perfect trick. Now you might be asking, what about a scatter plot? I learned of those in stats 101. And I must admit, finding patterns in a scatter really can be kind of fun. A bunch of points plotted across an X and Y show relationships between A and B. When A does this, B does that, and is there any trend that we can see? Sometimes your data isn't numbers at all, but rather lots of words set a root. Qualitative methods produce a kind of data where the words give the meaning to take note. Callouts are useful, heat maps can help, or you can make a cloud filled with 
words. Each of these is handy, each of these works, and your meaning won't get lost to numbers, nerds. So that's a few tips I hope you find helpful when you think about the story you can tell. As you're sitting there staring at a spreadsheet of data, and all you really want to do is yell. Start at step one, learn the different charts, and when and how and where they work best. And once you've conquered that, you just need to learn to make them step by step. PowerPoint slide, or your report, or your article, wondering what the heck did you mean by that? Oh, that's just about six minutes. Two minutes of film. Got it. Thumbs up.